I've got major news for the medical applications of the tiny human brains you can grow in a jar if you want to. For people who are new here, yes, those are tiny human brains. They are just disembodied. Are those eyes? Yes. Do they work? Kind of. They're essentially the same ocular cups that you would have while you were developing. You can use them to run computation on. There's even companies that sell out a subscription to use these little guys. First off, these guys have been used in both mice and monkey models to heal induced strokes. That would mean that you have something like a primate, a part of their brain has been purposefully damaged, and brain organoids are grown and then brought in and allowed to proliferate. They actually do just fine. This would be the first real treatment for strokes that has really ever been conducted. There have been a lot of research trying to use stem cells. It's not that effective. Turns out if you grow a tiny organoid, so a immature human organ that resembles a fetal brain very closely, it does a lot better at healing damaged areas. Interestingly, a lot of this research has shown that the older brain organoids are the ones that do better. That's a little bit counterintuitive because these little guys can't be kept alive all that long. When they were first developed, you could keep them alive for about a month or then three months. And now you can keep them alive for about a year. Turns out it is pretty hard to grow a human brain without, you know, a body. I don't know what my hair is doing today. Now, if you're familiar with Parkinson's, it's a disorder in which the brain stops producing dopamine effectively. It is progressive and it is not great to have. There is some question if it's autoimmune, there can be genetic components, and it can strike randomly. Incidentally, if you have ADHD, you are at risk, which means I'm, I'm, I'm screwed. I accept it. There's also, you know, the family history issue. You can grow human brain organoids. You can transplant them into the skull of a rat, and they differentiate into correct tissue types that are actually capable of producing dopamine and reversing the movement disorder. Now you might be asking, are there any ethical concerns? Because you are taking human brain tissue and putting it into a mouse, it does change their behavior. We do know that. I haven't seen any studies specifically addressing whether or not they might make mice more intelligent. If you just had an induced stroke and a, you know, a brain organoid come in, even if it is human, you still had a lot of damage, that'd so be pretty hard to think that that could happen. But we do know that if you take a embryonic mouse and put human neural stem cells in it, they are smarter. I have seen a lot of arguments from both sides for the human brain organoids. Is it ethical to use them in chimeras? Is it ethical to use them for computation? I think there's a better argument for computation not being ethical. Not even a whole lot of evidence that they're that good at it. Our brains are just not that good at running calculations. But the use of these little guys for medicine has a lot of applications, obviously. When you are doing research, one of the big things to consider is the potential suffering of an animal going to result in significant scientific or medical advancement. Aside from, you know, being able to be put into a brain, you can also put them and attach them to muscle tissue and they can control the muscle tissue. They're very powerful new pieces of technology. This is really exciting. And you might be asking, why hasn't this been moved to humans yet? It seems like they can provide treatments for a variety of conditions like strokes, Parkinson's, probably more. When our brains fail to function, we can just grow a little fetal brain and then transplant it into our skulls. It worked in monkeys, it worked in mice, why not us? It is complicated. I think it is rapidly progressing towards human trials and I'm excited when we get there, but our brains are kind of a precious thing. And if you try a radical experimental treatment and it doesn't go well, that could be worse than the actual condition. So be patient, we will get there. It does look really promising.